Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to a screencast where I'm going to demonstrate creating an R package for sharing data. So yesterday I started exploring this data set of the COVID-19 Open Research Data Set Challenge, COVID-19. It's released by um, Coalition of, of Research Institutions and Government on uh, the White House at, to, um, uh, to share a large number of scholarly articles that relate to the coronavirus outbreak. So Kaggle has provided a set of tasks, uh, some questions that they're really interested in, um, uh, in getting some missions of analyses. And uh, so I've been having taken a little bit, a little bit of a look through that. What I did is yesterday I shared a video of myself cleaning and exploring this open research, uh, this this data set. So you can see where I particularly like went through and I cleaned the data. I made a couple of graphs and I realized I really want to make it easy for other people to work with the cleaned data. The way that it comes from from uh, the actual Core 19 data set is in a very large number of JSON files. Uh, they look something like, um, I'm just looking at my uh, yesterday's video. They look something like this. Hmm. Well, there's a large number of JSON files. And um, I and it, really even just starting to parse them could be, a, um, could be a place where people get stuck. So I want to make it really easy for people to download and analyze the COVID-19 data themselves using R. To do that, I'm going to create an R package. So I decided to make this a uh, screencast because I haven't really shared much about what goes through my head and what would I go, how would I go about creating an R package. I wanted to try showing my thought process to other people who might be interested in creating data packages in the future. So uh, what I did is I put together a, a chunk of code. This is some code that I'm going to be, um, uh, that I, I wrote the, this as close to what I wrote during the screencast that I've already shared. I worked on it a little bit before I decided that I wanted to make it a, pa a package. So this is a little bit um, more cleaned up than the version that I had yesterday, though it's very in the previous screencast, but it's very similar. So this is going to be very different from my usual screencasts. My usual screencasts, I'm opening a brand new data set, I'm discovering things about it, making graphs, exploring it, uh, trying to share a few quick conclusions. Here I'm not going to be looking for conclusions. I'm going to be creating a package that is meant for other people to work with this data make and make conclusions from it. Uh, I'm going to see what I can get through in an hour. I don't know if I'll have the package fully ready uh, in that hour. It's certainly possible that I, I won't get close to that. But I wanted to, sh uh, to just share what that process would look like for other people that might might work on it. So I'm going to take this raw code uh, that creates a, some that cleans up the data and show how I turn it into a data package. You ready to get started? All right. The way that I create a package is going to new project. I say new project in R Studio. New do, uh, package, new uh, project type, R package. I'm going to call it Cord19. That's the name of the um, data package. I want it to be a uh, Git repository. I have a special folder for R packages. I'm going to keep it in a new session, sure. Okay. When we create a new package, it uh, gives us this R project, uh, R Studio that is, gives us this R project, and we're going to learn to use the tools in our studio as well as uh, the really useful use this package uh, to set up our, uh, our package infrastructure. So what are the parts of a package? Um, I'm not going to explain as we go. I'm really going to mostly work on this. So I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is try is give this a name that is the COVID-19 Open Research Dataset Challenge. Uh, the author, now this is actually where I, well the author is me, but you actually do it a bit differently. I'm going to add myself as the, um, as the maintainer and I'll say it's not that important to, um, to get all this right, right away. Uh, but remembering how is the structure of this? We actually usually use authors.r uh, David Robinson email equals at gmail.com, I think this is it. Oh, uh, it's, so there's a uh, format that is generally recommended, the standardized format, and it looks something like this. Am I getting it right? I think I'm getting it close. We'll find out later if we got it right. Uh, but the story is like, I'm, I'm setting myself as the, um, as the creator and the author of this package, uh, but it is under a license. And something that's really important about this is that um, the package is under a specific license. Here, if I look at the, um, 
data set description is going to have a link to the license. Here it is. Licenses, let me see. There's a link to, so one thing is I'm not going to be overly focused on licenses. I'm not going to be putting this on CRAN. I'm going to get back, come back to this. Uh, but the, um, where is it? Yeah, I'm not going to be putting this on CRAN. I also really don't want fears around licenses to prevent uh, an important data set like this to, to be to spread. Um, so the, uh, oh yeah, the data set license, see, so I'm actually just going to do something really simple. Here's what, what you can, but it, it is, it does, pa it is the standard way to do this within license. No, it's, uh, oh, right. What I do is I say this, I go to, oops, this is the wrong one. I go to description. I say file license. And I'm just putting this here for now. Oops, I say there's an R file. And I saved it. Oops, I really I really didn't get off to a good start here. Move our license. Move license.r to license. And now it looks more like this. So I just wanted to note what the um what the license uh is quickly. Uh, all right, and later I'm gonna put in the description. I'm not uh, looking for that right now. The story is what I'm going to do is, I'll put in, I'll, it's actually a good idea to usually put in a description, uh, shares the data from the COVID user challenge on hosted by Kaggle. See here for more. And I'll give it a link. In a yeah, in a format easily analyzed within R. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is that the form that it's in again is like many 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 JSON files. That's kind of a lot uh, to to work with. So instead, I'm going to be be um uh, cleaning it up into a couple of tables so that those can be shared in this database. All right. Where does that does the code go? It actually doesn't go in the R files. We're going to be putting something in here. Uh, later I might show how we share packages, mostly R functions. This is gonna be going in, uh, use this, use data raw. It's actually gonna be, a, uh, now this is what's amazing about the use this package. It actually gives me a checklist of things it's doing. Uh, and data raw is the, the way that our studio recommends that if you have data preparation scripts, they go in data raw. So here, the code that I'm using um, to prepare the data set would go here. All right, and it would be use this, use data. Okay, and it's not gonna be called data set. It's going to be called, um, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll actually um, show what kind of code we're gonna be using here. I'm gonna be bringing, pulling in all this data. I just put it in downloads. The, the story of data set, of, of anything in data raw is it's not going to be run, it's not going to be run automatically, anything like that, but you want to make it as reproducible as possible. You want other people to be able to run it. That also means you actually want to reduce how many packages you use in it. Uh, you never want to use the tidyverse package. That's uh, really good for exploration. You want to load each, but it's, uh, it's not a good dependency. It just has a lot of dependencies itself. Uh, we want to load the particular ones we use here. I know we're using dplyr per tidyr and readr. I'm pretty sure we use stringr too. And we do use JSON Lite and we use Janitor. So uh, we do need a number of packages. Here's the other thing we're going to do with each of those packages. I want to show that because we're working on this in a package, we're going to say we're going to use all those packages in the uh, description. Tidyr, readr, stringr, JSON Lite, Janitor. But you don't need them to run the package. You just suggest suggest them. Oh, wow, look at that. I did not know that you can only do one at a time. That's fine. I'll do it. The story is that you, uh, we're adding, I can just add them like this. Uh, by use package, it says, oh, put in the suggests dplyr. Let's also suggest per. Let's also suggest um, uh, tidyr, readr. So as I'm saying, if you're going to run your tests, you um, uh, you need this to, to, to parse all these um, files. So I'm actually going to add these JSON Lite 
And uh, what else am I adding? I'm adding, um, uh, I had it a second ago, janitor, string R. So these are suggested packages. Someone who installs them is not going to get uh, all these packages showing up. All right. I'm starting into this folder. Hard coding a path isn't that bad here. Um, uh, this is not a crazy place to put it because this is the name of the, the uh, directory. Uh, I'm just saying it has to be downloaded, but it's worth noting it has to be downloaded. See, I'm, I'm actually trying to be kind to people that are coming in the future and might be downloading this data. Download the data set. Download the data set from Kaggle here requires account. Uh, then decompress. Decompress it. All right, so use this um, this folder and then I read in the metadata. Uh, the metadata as, so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be opinionated. Uh, the metadata as it came in uh, wasn't actually my favorite format because, um, uh, so this is all the metadata and notice it has like source underscore X. It also calls it SHA here, S-H-A, whereas actually it calls it um, ID later in the, um, uh, it call, it'll call it ID later in uh, paper, paper ID. So I'm renaming it. Uh, I don't think source X is very meaningful. Uh, so I can count source X. What is that anyway? Metadata, oh. Metadata count source. Oh, oops. Wow, I don't know what all those problems are. That's, that's, uh, yeah, so we see like, oh, the source is PMC, Men Archive, CZI, BioArchive. Mm. I didn't like that I had the letter X in it. I didn't think there's a good reason for that. So I, I did a little renaming. I also use clean names because some of these had spaces in them. If I just ran it, it would be like Microsoft Academic Paper ID. I use clean names from Janitor. They're all a uh, snake case now. Okay, that's paper metadata. Uh, this is the hard part. I'm only going to do it on a, uh, this is the part where I actually read in a bunch of JSON objects. What I did is say all the JSON files in this folder, parse them in. If you see the other screencast, you see how that worked. Um, and then I end up with uh, all those individual papers. Then comes the hoist function, which does a lot of work here and is designed to actually pull out the um, the papers the uh, and the actual text of each of these articles. So the paper ID, this is... Uh, 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 20 strings that represent what the section is. Like the section could be, could be the introduction, could be the, oh, well, here it's a, a little bit. Oh, articles, section, and I'll pick the second one. Oh, yeah. So each of these could be, so it, uh, it, it says like, oh, here is the section. It's an introduction, it's results. It has longer names. We might wanna keep that. It might be kind of interesting. Uh, so I'm keeping that, the text, I'm keeping the citation and uh, the bibliography entries. We're gonna parse those in a moment. Then I go through, I'm not walking through exactly how this code works. As I said, I wrote this in between. That's not what this is about. This is about turned into a package. Uh, but then I that creates this paragraphs data set. Uh, this, so this is right now only on, on 100 or so um, uh, articles, but I'm actually gonna while we while I talk, I'm gonna be running this on the full set. So, what is a paragraphs data set? What's really important when you develop a data package is you decide what is the um what is like the the units, the tables that you're gonna be working with. It's kind of our data model. Uh, in this case, we decide that okay, that we could look at the uh, the paper level, uh, the article level, but here we actually um. Uh, this is actually at a paragraph level. Why is paragraph relevant? Well, um, we might want to say, we might want to look at text within paragraphs. That is like basically within lines. There can be multiple sentences within one of those lines, but um, that's the form that it's actually given to us. Also, interestingly, it's given, we get a set of citations. Like here we say start and uh, the text that goes with that citation and uh, some of the sections are a bit weird, but we can see like, okay, we scroll through and we see the sections have names that might describe what they're about, the discussions. Uh, this is this is the discussion, which is a common section of a paper. All right, so that's, um, th this is our, our data model is one row, one, currently one row per paragraph. All right, so um, yeah, still running. That's, uh, that's reasonable, it's gonna take a minute. How long do I think this will take? I think this will take, this will take a while. In the meantime, it's always good to write documentation while you're thinking, as long as you can. Can we create a new file? Yes. 
How am I going to write documentation? What I'm going to do is actually um, use R oxygen 2, uh, which means I would create an R file that uh, has this uh, num number sign, then an apostrophe, and it would say uh, one row per um, art. Uh, actually, I'll call this one papers in the Cord 19 data set. I'm going to do the papers as the first uh, one that I'm going to work with. Getting back to that. Should I run this? I'm going to run this, and that'll give me a minute longer to explain what I'm doing. I'm going to document that metadata set that we uh, had. The documentation is one of the most useful reasons to make a uh, data set a package. Is it actually we can it comes with we can actually say, okay, the um, uh, I'm going to describe the uh the, this data set, and what I would uh what I do is I would actually say okay I call it metadata, and I'm going to call it papers. Paper, yeah, we have a paper ID, each of these is a paper. So this is like uh, meta, uh, one row uh, metadata for papers in the Cord19 data set. So I'd note like, uh, so what, do I, what would I do here? I'd say, uh, I'd say metadata such as titles, authors, uh, a journal, and publication IDs for each article in the, I'm going to call it, I'm going to stick to the word paper, in the Cord19 data set. Uh, I'm going to throw in a quick C also, uh, the, and what is it called? There's a name for this file that I, that I wanted, uh, and it's, so C also just something that I can throw in, well, it's actually C also URL this, always useful to link back. This, and I can say this comes from the, it's really good to be transparent about where things come from. All sources, metadata. Do we want the year? I might not want the year. Well, I'll keep the year. Also, it's the file in the, um, in the decompressed data set. All right, so that, I'm writing this description, um, and I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, but I'm actually going to call this papers. This is the documentation for papers. Okay. Uh, what have I done? I've loaded up. Oh yeah. So I've I've got my paragraph. Oh, I uh, I set up my articles hoisted. This is a data set with one row for section text citations. Um, and now I'm going to unnest these into paragraphs. Uh, so it's one row per paragraph. And this actually has the full text. It's not going to have the abstract. It's not going to have, it's just going to be the, um, the body of the paper. One row per um, Cord19 paragraph. That actually makes me realize I should call this data set Cord19. I should have Cord19 at the start. So Cord19 papers. Cord19 I'm actually going to call it paragraphs here. I might need to, I might want to change it a bit. And then I'm going to actually pull out the citations as well. I'm really interested in what citations go with each paragraph. Why am I interested in that? Uh, it could be useful. If I want to say here are clusters of articles that fit together, um, I'm trying to anticipate the kinds of questions a person will ask when they, anal when they analyze this data. They might want to know, oh, these two, par these two articles were cited in the same... <clears throat> paper. Oh, these two articles were cited in the same paragraph. In fact, these two articles were cited right next to each other. Articles being cited next to each other is a common, uh, it's a clue that the papers are probably related. Uh, and that could be useful. It's one of the pieces of, um, of information we can try and pull out if we're analyzing a data set like this. Uh, this is going to take a minute, uh, minute to run, so it's always good to write documentation. But notice I'm actually saying, oh, I'm documenting Cord19 papers. Uh, and the way this is going to work, oh, how is the, um, I'm trying to remember, something I do when I don't, uh, uh, when I can't remember what the standard way to do something is, is I go to a place where I know it has been done. Uh, the, uh, we have a data set here, stop words. Here it is. Describe, format. Ah, here it is. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That looks great. And, um, what we, uh, what I do then is I would look at, I go here and I would actually say, aha, I'm describing this a um, tibble with uh, one observation for each page, each paper and the following columns. 
So what I want to know is, does uh, do they have standard descriptions for these? Maybe Kaggle has documentation. It would be good to work with that rather than trying to make it up myself. Uh, not amazing, no. Columns, source, title, digital object. Well, I mean, it's, it's sort of better than nothing, kind of. Uh, uh, and what I do here is I would say, okay, I want to say describe and um, I'm actually gonna, I'm call, I notice I call it here paper ID. Taking a while to parse this, that, that's uh, taking its time. Uh, but then in the end, we'll have every, every citation along, alongside every paragraph. Uh, what it say is um, SHA of the paper PDF um, identifier, unique identifier that can link to full text and citations. SHA of the paper PDF. That's actually what it is. It's a, it's a of the, um, it's actually a, uh, a, a hash of it. So source, I like to be really descriptive of my source and I can actually say, e.g., um, I actually counted them a minute ago, didn't I? I did, but I can't see it. That's okay. E.g., PubMed, CZI, whatever that is, dot, dot, dot. Um, and I can also say, let me see, we have uh, title. So some things don't need to be the, the described DOI, digital object identifier. You don't have to go overboard. Like I think some people, when this is Kip, when you're writing documentation, some people will uh, will say like title of the paper, and that's not actually helpful. That doesn't like, it's not uh, it's not giving any extra uh, information. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add a couple things here. I'm going to say PubMed ID, license license abstract see like there they say paper abstract yeah we, we, we get it it's an abstract uh, an abstract is a paragraph that starts off paper publish time I actually notice publish year publication I'm gonna just put that there because uh, I think it sounds confusing but it's actually missing for a lot of these papers so I don't think um, we should overly count on it it looks more it looks more useful than it is. I would have loved if it had like a month as well, and we and especially as uh, as time goes on and more publications come out about the um, journal, journal, and then the Microsoft Academic Paper ID. I get put that in snake case. You know, a lot of writing and creating a package that's useful. Um, we'll see whether this is useful. Uh, but a lot of creative package really is kind of patience. It's just like um, uh, trying to do the uh, try to make it as helpful as possible for people that might want to use it. Uh, has full text. Now, does it have full text? Sure. And uh, yeah, pretty sure. I, do we do it? Do we do an export if we let's check on on tidy text example? Do we do an export? No, I don't. Okay. Oh, and it uses it in quotes. Okay. This is a little bit funky. Core 19 papers in quotes. And then I'm going to create that data set. Ah, it finished running. There are uh, almost a million times that a paper is referred to from here. Hmm. Probably can only use the ones that have ref IDs. Otherwise, they're not going to be... Oh, that helpful? I don't know. I'll, I'll leave. I guess I, I guess I can leave them in. How big is this object? Actually, this object is not the one I'm worried about. The one I'm worried about is the uh, paragraphs. I'll get to it in a second. All right. The story is here's our Chord 19. I, I wrote up some documentation uh, notice. And, oh, yeah, there's one last step. I didn't have this. Here's the articles hoisted. No, I don't need this anymore. I was start going in another direction. I do need, um, yeah, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna return to this in a minute. Uh, here it is. Uh, but the story is we have our Chord 19 papers. I'm gonna show what, uh, what it means that I'm um, using this data set. So here's my Chord 19 papers. That's a data, that's metadata. 
Uh, what I'm gonna do is I run that once, then I say use this, use data, Code 19 papers. I, it is named. Oh. Someone remind me how this works. Use data, unquoted names. Oh, so let me. Here it is. What it does is it, it uh, it's saving the paper metadata to data code 19 papersrda Boy, if that one took a minute. How big is that file? That ends up in uh, the data folder as 10 megabytes. Okay. Uh, some of them are going to be a lot bigger than that. All right. Um, so the story then is like, is now, let's say I load this package. Um, now this, this code doesn't get run when I load the package. Also, while I'm at it, I'm doing everything in a funky order, but I'm going to delete the hello. The code doesn't get run. What I'm doing is, um, is I'm, uh, let me see. I'm going to go to the build tab, install and restart. Oh no, when I restarted, oh nuts. When I restarted it, it's gonna, oh no, it's backing up my huge directory. Oh, oh, what a silly move. There's actually a much easier thing I could have done. Uh, I had a couple huge uh, objects here. This was a, just a big mistake. What happened is I have a couple huge objects. I've got the, um, the paragraphs, I've got the references, I've got even the JSON objects is, is, is really quite big and it's backing all those up. Uh, wow, you know what I do um, when, when, when that happens is it's actually a little bit silly, but uh, I go and I uh, go into Core 19, I create a brand new, I just burn it down and start over. Oh, um, yeah, it's, it's, that's going to be going for a while. Wow. There's a much better way to do this. The way to do it is you do load all. This means I actually have to start from scratch, doesn't it? If I do load all, now what I can, what actually happens is there's Cord 19 papers. What, where did that come from? Well, that came from the data set. Ah, I didn't load um, dplyr, uh, which uh, allows it to be to be um, read a bit uh, a bit better. So the um, so I do library dplyr and then I do Cord 19 papers and. I, um, and what this does is it sh actually shows, oh, so now I've got the data set, but if I want to find out more about it, here's what I do. Oh, uh, I don't have documentation yet. Uh, what I can do is do dev tools document. Oops. I, uh, made a mis made a mistake somewhere in my, um, uh, somewhere in here. I do format describe. Oh, I don't have an end describe. That's better. Great. Uh, one thing is I do want to remove the namespace file. I want, uh, I deleted the namespace file. I want uh, the package to override it. Okay. So what I did is I wrote my documentation. I have this and now if I do dev tools, load all, or I can do command shift L and it does, command shift L does a uh, dev tools load all. Uh, then I actually can do question mark cord 19, oh, um, papers with a question mark or hello. And I actually get, look at that. I wrote that like minutes ago. And doesn't this kind of look official? Uh, that's pretty cool. And in fact, this lets me actually edit bits of this to say, oh, I don't like how that format looks. I'm going to put it here. Uh, and then I'm actually going to put uh, date. I'm going to change this to date uh, file in the, the compressed data set cause in, case I want, in case we do updates to this data, we want to um, work with that. And um, uh, yeah, that actually looks pretty official. Like, well, look at that documentation. Did this restart yet? It did. I'm not going to do that again. Do I still have my objects? Do I have uh, do I have these packages? I lost all the packages when I restarted. Look at that. Charming. It's good that I checked, otherwise when I printed something it was gonna break. Maybe it already had them. I'm not no, I guess it already had them. Okay. Does it have my objects? Okay, it does. Phew. Okay. So notice what I did is I set up Cord 19 papers. 
Now, here's the paragraphs. It's not quite in the form I want it because I actually don't want to keep the citations. I separate out the citations oops, into a separate table. Uh, it is, yeah. So what I'm going to do actually is, um, is I'm going to keep my paragraphs. By the way, how big is this object? Object.size will tell me. It doesn't tell me that well. I thought I have megabytes. Is one, yeah, 1.1 1 .1 gigabytes. This is uh, big. <laughs> um, hmm. Uh, the, we, it might end up actually a bit smaller based on some things we go. Oh, here's one thing. We're going to be removing the citations. So what I'm going to do is now that citations um, pulled out, move it. Notice I kept the paper ID and a paragraph. Paragraph select minus citations. Cord 19 over Cord 19 is the open data, the uh, open research data set. Cord 19. Oops, I call this what you call that. Paragraphs. Why is this small? Was this small? No, I guess it's the same size. Right, it's the right size. Object size. Cord 19. Paragraphs. All right, it's smaller. Yeah, it's 400 megabytes. Still really big. Uh, we're going to do another thing to, um, yeah, when, when it gets saved, it's going to be a little compressed. Uh, but it's definitely, uh, no question, it's, it's a big, uh, we're storing tons of, of data. What am I saying that we might want to, uh, compre to compress things further? Well, here's something I want to actually talk about. There's duplication in this data. I noticed this really briefly uh, while I was analyzing it. Uh, there's a PubMed ID, and if I said count PubMed ID sort equals true, we actually have, um, so there's some that don't have a PubMed ID, but there's others that have like, thir this is the same paper pop, at least it thinks is the same paper popping up 30, uh, uh, 35 times. So if, I did, so if I did like PubMed ID is this, Benchmark guide to binding site comparison. Look at this. It actually like it really does look like they're all the same. Uh, so one thing is, anytime there's multiple, we, we really do want to get rid of. We want to get rid of some of them. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say arrange by um, by uh, title. Uh, the reason is I actually want the NA's titles to be at the. I want the the titles that are NA at the. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to go arrange not as in a title. Oops, I meant to do arrange is in a title. That puts all the titles that I'm missing at the end and is in a abstract. Things, if there are multiples of a, of a single paper, I want to keep the one that has a title and an abstract. And while I'm at it, uh, an author's. So I'm curious, but if I count journal, yeah, also a journal. While I'm at it, I'd love to have authors in a journal. So if there are multiple of the same one, I want to keep the one that has um, that is that uh, maybe is most is most meaningful. Uh, all right, that that's like that just this in case the multiples. But now what I'm going to do is do some distincting, and I'll say distinct. Uh, now they all now one thing to note is they all have the same paper ID. Oh nope, there are duplicate papers. Wow, that is already a little interesting. Is that if, even if I just distinct by paper ID, they end up, uh, uh, they end up, I didn't, I did not expect that, uh, with duplications. So I'm, I'm pretty confused as to how, yeah, um, okay. So one is, some don't have a paper ID. Oh, right, the ones that are not publishable don't have a paper ID. I think I might just remove them, have only the metadata for the full text ones in the package. That would simplify it a little, but there are downsides as well. Um, I'm gonna simple. I'm gonna do that simplification. I'm gonna say filter not. It might mean there's some research people can't do with this. They could otherwise do, um, but I, I think it's a good idea to say okay. Not is in a paper ID, and I'm gonna say distinct paper ID dot keep all equals true. So it says if there are duplicate papers, there were 22 duplicate paper IDs. Just keep the first one. First being the one that has as many of these as we can, has a title, has an abstract, uh, because I did that sorting. Move the filter up one just for kicks. I'm also going to distinct by the title. Uh, if there's multiple with the exact same title, I'm going to keep only one of them. 
Uh, now, is there any chance that's... Now, that looked like it, it got rid of a lot of them. I'm curious about something. Yeah, those don't look like... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm also going to... Let me see. I'm going to say not as an A title, just for, for kicks. Uh, but I'm going to do a count of the title. The choice when you make a data package, do you just pass on the data in the simplest form or do you um, do you add some opinions? Do you try and like, um, do you try and for example, remove duplicates? I'm gonna try removing duplicates. I think it seems really, um, it seems like a, like uh, like that is more likely to lead to problems than not, and it also will, will increase any duplicate papers will just increase the size that we have that people have to download. Uh, so I'm going to actually say yeah, distinct title, and I'm also going to distinct the um, the DOI the uh, the identifier the identifier. This keep all equals true is a good trick for. All right, did that remove any? Yeah, it removed a few hundred, uh, and I'm going to distinct. This is not, these are not things I'm doing right now. I'm also going to distinct the PubMed ID. The problem is I don't want to get only, the problem is I don't want to get only the, um, the one of the NAs. Uh, is there anything I can do? Is there anything I can do? <laughs> this is actually a little uh, silly, but here's what I can do. Uh, yeah, I want to keep, only the first, there, there are a couple approaches I can take. Okay, the approach I'm gonna take is this. I'm gonna, if there are any, if there are missing PubMed IDs, I really wanna um, keep all the missing ones, but drop the duplicates. Uh, first question is if I count PubMed ID. Never mind. once I remove the, the duplicate uh, titles, there, the, I don't even need to touch the PubMed ID. All right, that might actually be in pretty good shape. Uh, I wonder then, is there anything else that I could be missing that I could be counting? Uh, I could do it on authors and journal or something like that. I could do lowercase versions of the titles. I wonder if I did a count string to lower title. This is me trying to clean this data, which I did mostly before I started here. Uh, some of them, yeah, these look pretty duplicated. Um, how many did I get rid of? 20 or so? Fine, I'll do it. What else does it say? Title lower equals string to lower title. I don't think I can do that in the distinct. Can I do that in the distinct? If I can do that in the distinct, I would be very happy. I can, really? Oh, that's great. I do a distinct um, string to lower title, keep all the whole thing. Uh, all right, uh, oh no, it, and it created a new column called string to lower title. Like, Good, 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 good. Okay, uh, and this is saved as, um, this is actually, I'm just gonna do it all in one big step. This is not a, a, a computationally expensive step. Here's my Cord19 papers metadata. Uh, something that I'm gonna do is document. Uh, I would say note Note that duplicate papers based on paper ID or that um, or paper ID, DOI, or title have been removed, have been deduplicated. And that uh, we can actually tell that, that I think they, they probably did a lot of cleaning when they put this in, but it looks like there's still there's always room to prove, uh, always room to do extra cleaning and Duplicate papers have been removed, deduplicated, and uh, what's the other thing I did? Papers without a, did I do just without a title? Without a paper ID or title have been removed. So something I'm curious about, in this metadata, in this COVID-19 paper, COVID-19 papers, uh, count has full text. Some of them don't have full text? Yeah, huh. Okay, um, they still have a paper ID, that's interesting. All right, but I'm going to, um, but yeah, this is the, um, yeah, this is a, a cleaned version of the data. 
All right, uh, and that uh, gets saved. Uh, I want overwrite equals true. That gets saved. All right. Now I also created my paragraphs. I created my paragraph citations. Uh, but now that the citations are moved it from paragraphs. Did I, I already created this? I created this. Good. Um, all right. Here's my code 19 paragraphs. And here's, what was, and oh, the, the other thing I'm going to do, oops. The other thing I'm going to do is actually when I created articles hoisted, I created this. I did, I, what I should do is semi-join it with the uh, Chord 19 papers. Uh, basically reducing the, the size, removing those duplications. Um, and uh, Chord 19. I'm going to do it on each step just because I can't deal with um, having it happen now. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna do it up here, and I'm gonna run it through. I'm missing a pipe somewhere. There, I'm missing a pipe. Uh, all right. Semi join with chord nineteen papers by. No, I'm not gonna do it there because what if I want to change chord nineteen papers? I'm gonna do it at the last minute. Look at this. Uh, I remove citations and I, I remove. Ah, it's gonna be so much faster. Here's my, my paragraphs. It's actually shorter than it used to be. Move those duplicated papers. Object.size. This is as small as we can get it. Um, 266 megabytes. Because let's face it, it is an enormous text corpus. There's not really any smaller we can get it. Uh, let's, let's hope that... Uh, no, I'm definitely not going to... I'm really not going to spit this to Cran. We, we haven't... Uh, the license probably isn't appropriate for it. Uh, but I want to put it on GitHub so that people can use it. Let's see how it does. Uh, paragraphs. It'll take a minute. I'm going to call it Chord19 Paragraph Citations. So here's the thing. I'm not just separating out the references. I'm also doing the citations as their own. I'm doing this as the Chord19 Citations semi-joined with the Chord19 papers. I'm keeping by paper ID. I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm actually gonna like keep, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm, and then I'm going to have the citations separately. Uh, so the, I'm gonna call the citations. What I'm gonna do is, here it is, now Chord19 is loaded. Okay, what I'm gonna do is say, uh, here's our, I wonder how, how big was that in the file system? Let's find out by going to the data folder, 81 megabytes. Eh, it's downloadable. Uh, it'll take a minute to, to load it. I noticed they compressed it uh, when it got saved. Um, okay, so here's, that's the um, Core 19 paragraphs. The paragraph citations is, these are link a paper and a paragraph to a reference ID. Do I wanna filter only for the ones Maybe I want to filter for only ones that have reference IDs. Do I want to? Decide, 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 decide. Uh, no, because uh, you could still, I don't know. You could you could do something with it. You could, uh, I'm not crazy about that. Actually, I take it back. I'm going to say filter not is in a ref ID because you can't use it to join to their paragraphs. That is a choice uh, that I'm making here is to say, uh, and I'm going to have to document that. Then the last step is actually, I need to get the citations out. Uh, so what this is actually doing, this code, articles hoisted, is it's going, uh, this code from articles hoisted, it's going into these bi these bibliography entries. It's unnesting them, uh, one row for every bibliography entry, like, that is like, oh no, 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 oh good, okay, phew. Uh, when I did that, you really have to, oh wait, yeah, that, that actually, I guess would have worked because it didn't, I only selected these two. Still, it's a little bit slow. I'm gonna start running it before I explain what it does. Uh, so what Citations does is it's actually going into, um, here, let's actually open one of those uh, downloads. Let me see. 
Let's open one of those files. Hmm. Downloads. Well, that's, oh, I guess it's waiting on this, oh, red. I'm going to uh, use my, edit, my text wrangler edit tool to say, whoop, oh, there it goes. Okay, just took its time. Uh, the story is that I'm pulling out these references. Where are the references? Here they are. They're saying, this is the reference ID. Huh, it's doing it wrong. I'll tell you why it's do what I just did is doing it wrong. Is notice ref ID right here is B1. I need it to be bib ref, so bib ref zero. Hmm. Oh no, this actually might work. Let me see. Where is B0? Oh, that was, that was not so, so well formatted. Where is B24? This, the theory that I have is that it'll show like, oh, here's the place where this got cited. Hmm. Oh, this might be a bad example. Oh, site spans. Oh yeah, that's a bad example. It doesn't, this is one that does not have ref IDs. Uh, bad example, bad examples happen. Here's one, ah, uh, good. Bib ref 31, ah, uh, okay. Uh, that's not great. Uh, this, the, why is it not great? It's, because, it's not great because, um, here, these um, text are, this is actually link, this ref ID links is called bib ref 22. What I'm actually grabbing out from it is this ref ID, which is not bib ref 22, it's B22. Maybe it's always standardized that way, like uh, bib ref. If so, then I'm okay, but that could depend on the, um, on the source, well, okay. We'll see when the data comes in. Uh, the story is that I want to create this data set of, of uh, citations, but while we're waiting on it, I can, can I create a new file? Yes, I can. I'm gonna, call, I'm gonna create my uh, file for port 19, uh, so I'm just gonna call it uh, paragraphs. Yeah, should I call it paragraphs? Should I call it port 19 text? I'm gonna call it port 19 paragraphs. Um, so then I'll say, one uh, te full text of the papers in the Cord 19 data set separated into paragraphs. Uh, and then what I'll say is um, full text of the papers in one row, one observation per paragraph form. And format a table with variables, so variables and columns. Uh, what I do is it say item describe what was the name? Oh yeah, I'm just remembering what what did I what did I name what did I name those columns. See I'm going around, I'm just like paper ID, ID, and that has the exact same form as that other thing. Negative fire that can link full text metadata, yeah full text to metadata and citations. And then I, but then it, uh, besides paper ID, it actually has the section, section, e.g. introduction, results, discussion, text, full text. That actually, oh, a uh, paragraph. Uh, it'll be a number. index of the paragraph within the paper. One, two, three. So these are actually all the columns that was in that were in that table. And um, see also wonder if I should have see all the same see also for all of them. Probably doesn't hurt. Never hurts to do a lot of references. Chord nineteen chord nineteen paragraphs is the name of this data set. 
form uh, includes only the ones in code link core 19 papers. These are like papers to the metadata, thus deduplicated and filtered. Just worth noting. Yeah, this takes, this one's going to take a, it'll take a minute. Uh, so, so stories then that it can be joined with the um with the other ones. Uh, I'm gonna grab the power cord. Yes, lots well, runs. Still running, huh? Yes. That's going to take its time. Yeah, there really are a lot of citations across these articles. Ooh, I forgot to do a semi-join first. That would have sped it up a little bit. Would have reduced the size a little bit. I could have removed the papers that were um, uh, that I didn't need. But yeah, what it's so I've added my paragraphs documentation. Yes, I have. Okay, I'm going to add one more uh, paragraph, uh, core 19 paragraph citation. So I want, let me see. So this is, notice this is my trick is while something is running, paragraph citations, link, papers and paragraphs, them to citations. In, so the story is um, one observation for each combination. Ah, look at it, it finished running, of a paragraph and citation. All right, so uh, before, I, before I do that, I'm going to uh, take a look back at the data set, look at citations. I'm curious what's sign. It seems silly what I'm doing, but I actually just wanted to get a sense. Okay, it's always got B. Huh. Uh, that's not so bad. Uh, it'll always be B something. Why is that useful? Because what I'm hoping is that paragraph is my data set of paragraph citations will always be bibref and then a number. Yeah, that's a good sign. I thought that I removed the ones. Oh, I did remove them. Uh, let me see. I removed them in another step. I said core 19 paragraph citations count ref. Automated seven is the one that gets that appears multiple times, but okay. Uh, this, the reason why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I think that I can uh, just let me take a quick look through. Like, do I think that I can replace the ref seventeen, v seventeen? Yeah, I bet I can. Uh, the story is what I'm going to do is do a little one more mutation. Say ref id equals string replace ref id. Bib ref. Oh yeah, I can just do string. Oh, uh, with just the lowercase letter b. Mini op optimization. Do that after the filter. Oop! It's not the paragraphs. It's the paragraph citations. Why did I do that? I did that so that these ha are now b thirty etc. And the story is now I can join my citations together. Uh, so I can do citations. Uh, just like this, and uh, I'm gonna do. Here's my sign. If I did semi join chord nineteen papers. Yeah, it reduces it. Uh, what I would do is I should have done that first. I'm gonna do something a little bit cheating. I'm going to do it here, but I'm not gonna rerun that. That took like three minutes to run. I'm not gonna or four minutes to run. What I'm going to do is citations. Is a little cheesy. There we go. Next time it happens, it'll happen the same. It'll this will just work. Uh, the story is that here we go. Citations, six hundred thousand citations, uh, and that's my um, data set. Oop, yeah, this is. Oop. Hmm. Why do we have paper ID? Paper 
percentage. Oh, okay, yeah. This actually is entirely uh, reasonable. Let me quickly check some. We don't have any duplicate paper ID, ref ID, do we? It certainly could happen. Let's find out. Good, we don't. Um, uh, all right, and I'm going to call this chord 19 paper citations because if I just want to know the paper reference level, uh, the paper like reference level. If I don't care about the paragraph that it was in, I can just use this table. Uh, and then I can say, uh, and there's paragraph citations separately. Uh, so then what I'll say is citations um, actually that looks pretty good. Later I might want to do some filtering. What I did is I pulled out a bunch of things. I didn't pull out authors actually, which is a little silly, uh, but the main reason I didn't pull out authors is that um, uh, I wonder how big this is. Well, one is that it's already pretty darn big, uh, but another is that um, the main the, yeah, the main reason is that um, uh, where was I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the main reason is that uh, yeah, yeah, I'm recording. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we don't have a standard way of representing it. Uh, an author we could do first and last name, etc. Like, I think it just is a lot to get into this metadata. And mostly, like, I think mostly people are interested in, like, what's the titles of what it was re of what it was referencing. Maybe other multiple. There could be a lot of du du duplication here. That would be a future project, is what they call record linkage. You could use my fuzzy join package for that to say what t uh, references are referring to the same uh, papers. That's actually, I think, a really important project. But I'm not going to do that uh, today. What I'm going to do is say use data core 19 paper citations overwrite equals true. So this is all the citations and I'm also going to link the paragraphs, use the paragraph citations. So I'm going to say use this, use data Coordinating paper uh, overwrite, true. I'm going to be um, saving the paragraph citations as well. That's one row per uh, p per citation for each paragraph that it's in. And now we actually have the force elements of our data model. Uh, the papers, the paragraphs, really maybe should have been called text or something. But the story is like the yeah. Uh, this is like the metadata about each um uh, paper uh, paper, and yeah. All right, in total, eh, it's not actually, it's not a ridiculous size, honestly. Um, compressed, it's not a ridiculous size. Uh, let's um, find out what it's like to use it uh, in something else. So what I'm going to do, let me see. I've saved these. Yeah. What I'm going to do is go to my backup Chord19 installation, and I'm going to uh, install the package. Hmm. Yeah, this is the part that takes a minute. Well, we'll see. It is a big data set. There are ways to work with these um, large data sets that aren't just like saving them, but yeah. Like we could uh, put in some kind of data repository. So the story would be, I've got my Paragraphs, I got my paragraph citations. Uh, oh, I didn't uh, yet document it. Uh, the story of the paragraph citations, core 19 paragraph citations, still loading, wow, that's not great, uh, is that I take my, I, uh, oh no, paragraph citations. And what I'd say is it has paper ID, it has paragraph that uh, can be joined, yeah. Combination of a paragraph and a, yeah, uh, this is good. Can be joined with uh, an citation. Can be joined with, here we are, I would call this, I do a code, I do a link, code and paper citations um, with, uh, oh, sorry, no, it's code 19 citations 
with paper ID and ref ID. So that's that's the case. This is paragraph to Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Or with chord paragraphs using paper ID and paragraph. So the story is here we have um paper ID paragraph citations. Yeah. Paragraph and there's start uh, index within the text where this citation occurs. How that installation go? Hmm. All right, well, it loaded. And the story is now if I do chord 19, that's not going great. I'll come back to that. Uh, and then we start, citation starts. And text of the set of the citation, usually a number, number with parentheses. So the story is like this is like oh it said it was this is referred to as forty three sure, uh, and then we finally have ref ID. Refer, uh, reference ID can be used to link to, to join to a uh, code link seem connecting across these paragraphs I take. Um, chord 19 paper citations. That looks much better. All right. Uh, that was me explaining this uh, this data not, uh, model, and this needs to change to paragraph citations. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. There's my paragraph citations. Okay. All right. So, uh, I haven't written all the documentation yet. I didn't even write the documentation for the fourth one yet, but I'm gonna skip that. I can you get the sense of how I'd write documentation. Uh, what I would do then is um, is let's load all. Hmm. In a sense, this might be a little too big. Oops, accidentally clicked the open pack project button. What I want to do next is give some examples of how we use this in an analysis. The big thing that most worries me about this is, are this data set, is this data set just too big to store in a package? Like, is it so big? Hmm, let's go from here. I'm going to, I'm going to show what I, how I'd write an, let's okay, I'll show how I would write an example. Core 19 papers. Example is, uh, oh, there's a, there's a great trick here, which is you write examples. I'd say one of the most important parts of working with a package, uh, writing a package, is say chord 19 papers count. Uh, what are the most common? Yeah, so let's say, what are the most common journals? Count journals, so equals true. Oh, looks like plus like lots from plus one. It's because I think a lot of these are open access and plus one is open access. Uh, and then I could say, uh, so here you usually want to show a couple examples of what you could do with it. You'd say, what are the most common words in titles? So then I do library tidy text. Anytime I have a package like this in, a, um, uh, in an example, you need to do to add uh, tidy text to suggests. And what I do is I'd say then um, tidy text, uh, oh yeah, chord 19 papers, unnest tokens, wor word title, I'll say select paper ID title, Count words, so it goes true. I don't actually need this step. Count word, 
anti-join stop words by word. If you've seen my screencast before, you've seen me do steps like that. Uh, the story, what I did there, oops, I forgot to do library dplyr, plyr, which we already have suggested. Uh, the story is like this shows some examples of what people can do with this data set. Uh, could also look at abstracts. I'm sorry, I could also look at abstracts. All right, so that uh, would be something that you can do with um, with uh, coordinate with core nineteen papers uh, with the papers data set. But what we could do then is look at um, we could then bring that over to other documentation. I could say, well, uh, I also want the documentation on core nineteen paragraphs, uh, and I'd say, notice by the way, notice that uh, I actually was writing code in here and then was able to run it. I can say. Um, uh, I can say, let me see, can I do paragraphs, words, what about section titles? And I could say count section. And I'm actually doing this command return within uh, here. We actually, oh, this there's lots of discussion, lots of introduction, often blank. Notice that it's often a lowercase. I might even do string to lower section. I'll need to do a library string R for the example there. And then we actually say, okay, these are some of the common ones. Uh, discussion, introduction, results, background, conclusions and conclusion, methods, material methods, statistical analysis, a common uh, name, but there's actually many possible names of, uh, of sections. Uh, and you could do a lot more examples within here. The idea then is that uh, examples along with a readme and a vignette are a way you can show off what the package can do. Um, I'm, uh, let me see, so what I did today let me see, what I did today is I set up a description. I set up a data raw. I'm gonna rename this to like, uh, to data sets, I don't know, just like cord 19 data sets, uh, cause this cre kind of creates all of them. Uh, I showed how to do the, um, how to do this. I'm actually gonna throw in, use this, use package, use this type equals suggest. I think it's good practice to suggest uh, when you're doing in the um, in in uh, in a data rather maybe that's not the case. Hmm. Anyway, um, maybe not. Hmm. Let me think. Let me ask around on that one. All right. And oh, I neglected to do Dev Tools document again. One of the issues here, I think, is that loading this package is gonna be slow. I wanna take a look around at how people do, uh, how, how people do large data sets with uh, packages. The data sets here are not ridiculous. They're like, we saw the largest is like 366 megabytes. It's not huge in memory, but we're loading it in compress, and it's not that huge. It's like 81 megabytes file, but um, it's, it's not that huge, but yeah, maybe it, if I, it'll, it'll make itself un, uh, manageable. Uh, but it's just handy because then I can say, it is really nice to be able to say questions like this. Say like, okay, get all the um, text. Oops. Look at format. Very, oh, what did I do wrong? I did sign wrong. Watch this. I did table with variables. Describe. That's what I did wrong. I put in the format wrong. What were the warnings? Yeah, I bet that was why. Uh, that was exactly why. Okay, so uh, I set up a description. Uh, I haven't yet done a readme and I haven't yet done vignettes. I also haven't done some of the other things. I haven't done any tests, which is less important in a data package uh, because it doesn't have like code, like moving code that you need to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, those are some of the steps that I might do that I would do next to, to show someone how to work with this. I'm not going to do them today. I've already been talking for about an hour and ten minutes, and um, I'm not going to dig into creating a readme. Should I? I'm going to show how to create a really simple readme. Yes. I'll do one last thing. What I'm going to do is say use readme RMD. Uh, what this does actually this is. Thing at the top is not actually useful. Um, actually, you know, what is it? The Core 19 package, uh, so I read something, I said the Core 19 package shares the uh, 
the um, coat. There's a there's a name for it, and I COVID nineteen open research data set. Actually, the word challenge is a little bit off. Shares in a form that is easily parsed, uh, that is easily analyzed within R. In a tidy form, form that is easily analyzed within R. There is no install, there is no, it's always good to have uh, installation instructions, but there's no, I have to say install GitHub. Uh, I'm not going to be putting this on CRAN. Uh, so uh, because of the size of the data sets and potentially the license. So I'm going to say moats install um, uh, GitHub DGR2 core 19. And then what I need to do is uh, say, okay, well, here's um, the um, package includes data sets um, around the papers in the core 19 data for around the core 19 articles. 19 uh, papers, papers, papers. All right, so the story then is um, we've got our core 19. I'm going to delete the rest of this uh, and I'm writing my readme RMD. And what it say is it say, oh, well, what is core 19 papers? For, uh, for example, the paper metadata is stored in core 19 papers. Learn how many papers came from each journal. Count journal sort equals true. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's exactly what we say. Most usefully, it has the full text of the papers. I'm just like, you know, improvising here in Core 19 paragraphs. With which I'll say it's pretty clear. Papers in Core 19. This allows for some mining with package like tidy text. Uh, so um, I usually give it. An, it's, you have no idea how useful uh, an example is in a readme. We can say, okay, here's the data. And uh, now uh, I would think to do this, but if someone didn't uh, see this, like would they, would they know this package was useful? Um, let me quickly check that I can, 1,000 works, 10,000, 100,000. This might be too big for unnest tokens without doing some subsampling. Yeah, 100,000 was a little bit too big, and for then uh, doing this on all uh, 364,000 is gonna end up with a lot of rows. So what I do is sample n, set c2020, and say uh, sample, I'm gonna say sample 1,000 random paragraphs. And I join stop words. So the story is we can do, um, we can show a couple of, um, if I had more time, I would really write, like, do a little more analysis like I did yesterday. Um, and I'm actually gonna also note references. I think it's actually really, citations. This also includes papers from uh, along uh, cited by each the articles cited by each paper chord 19 why did I do chord 19 by the way it's because prefixes are helpful they let you do autocomplete to grab uh, to see everything that's in the uh, package paper citations count title sort equals true do a lot in data science with counting, just saying uh, what are the most common? What are commonly cited articles? 
slash have a novel coronavirus for men with pneumonia in Saudi Arabia. I didn't do any filtering here and like submit your data set. I actually did yesterday, but Should I do this? Meh. Uh, someone could. Uh, there's probably some more cleaning that should be done, maybe even before I release this. But the story is that I have my, um, I've set up a few things with my README now, and um, install package from GitHub here, uh, and uh, the code 19 around the, includes, Package turns the core nineteen data uh, paper, data set into a set of tidy tables. Um, yeah, I think it's one way to know it. Okay, so um, I'm the last thing I do is I think it's uh, even though I'm doing this as a draft, it's really important to um, link. The source. All right. Uh, that's a bunch of what we would um, do here. I could add some notes on the license, things like that. But mostly, what I do, what I would do at this point, is do a uh, library knitter and knit the README because that's what's useful about a README dot um, MD dot RMD is you actually. Uh, I was writing code along the way, and it ends up in a README like this. And that looks pretty good. Okay, if I give a preview data, it would look good. All right, one last step here. I'm gonna be putting this on to GitHub uh, real quick. Uh, now, um, I'm gonna rearrange my Windows a second. Okay, yeah, last step. I put it on to GitHub. What I do is I do uh, DGR2, um, I go to GitHub and I create a new repository. I just want to point out how easy this is for anyone else who's creating a package. What I would do is I do, where am I, where am I, where am I? Repositories. I'm actually going to add something quickly. Work in progress. Doesn't hurt. Uh, what I would do is two things. Here's what I do first. I would commit it. I, would, I select everything, anything here that's not usable. Yeah, this is right. Okay, Ooh, I've got a hello.rmd, uh, the rd that is. Uh, yep, hello is gone because I removed the r file but not the generator thing. All right, uh, initial commit of the cord 19 package work in progress. All right, I have a readme, I have a description. I don't love releasing as 0.1.0. It feels a little presumptive to me. I prefer at least 0.0.1, .0 if not even. This is actually a dot 9,000 is a way to say uh, it's a development version. Uh, this is like a way of saying it's even before anything anyone would ever use. Uh, that's just that convention. So I'm gonna keep it at that. Oh. Initial commit cord 19 package work in progress. So it's really nice to include science so say includes three four data sets, three of which are documented, and a very short start to a Read me. Okay, um, the data, uh, data raw. Who's data raw? Yeah, raw for, for, for creating code. Code in data raw for creating the data sets. Oop. You notice what it is. is it actually, that's so cool, it warned me that I've changed the README, which I have. I did that, um, I added that work in progress line, but I didn't re -knit. It's actually the coolest thing. It didn't, uh, and it actually warned me right away. Uh, and that meant, there's a copy pasted it. There you go. 
And uh, last step is I say, I'm on my repositories. I need a, oh boy, so I need to sign in. Don't, I don't know, uh, wait, what am I doing? I don't love that this is being screen shared, but I guess it's just one authentication code. That's not, no, yeah, yeah, there's no risk of that. Uh, because it's not being shown live. That's fine. This is fine. All right, what I do is I go to repositories, new, and I call it chord 19, and say, uh, and say um, well, same thing I did in the description. It's always good to COVID-19 open research data set. Work in progress. Really good to always be all over that because I'm actually leaving this public. Uh, I kind of like to work as public as I can whenever I can. And I throw in, these are the two lines to push an existing repository. I went to the terminal, I run those two lines. It's taking a second because it's, run, it's run, setting up those large data sets. That'll take a minute. It'll also take a minute whenever someone installs it. The thing that makes worries me most is the loading. If it takes a while to load this package, that is a shame. I want to take a ask around how do people work with them. This is not huge data. This is not the kind where you need to be a database. Uh, warning, you might want to try large files. It's just a warning, it's not, a, it's not all that bad. Voila, we have our readme. We have the, um, yeah, we have a COVID-19 open research data set. This is a, an R package. Someone could uh, right now install it using um, these instructions. Yep, okay. So that was creating and uh, launching our package in about in a little under an hour, in a little under an hour and a half, um, there's a lot more work that has to be done. I have to write a lot more examples. Uh, at, at least one data set I didn't finish documenting, um, and I need to uh, actually run our command check, do some um, checks, make sure this passes, uh, this uh, passes some of the the automated quality controls within R. Uh, again, this is probably not something I'm going to be adding to CRAN because it's uh, it has a large data set because it. Uh, the license is not as simple. Uh, uh, it, it includes some copyrighted work under under a very specific license. Um, that again, I'm not focused on because I want to. Um, uh, but you can go to the uh, the page to learn more about that. All right. So um, yeah, this is uh this is the next stage of the work that I that I'm trying to do to maybe um. Uh, make this Chord 19 data easier to analyze. Um, I'm probably going to try using the, these clean versions of the data to do a couple of analyses in the near future, and uh, hopefully uh, I can get it set up so that uh, people like you can do anal can do analysis as well, um, and um, uh, maybe try submitting to Kaggle and seeing how um, what we can learn about uh, uh, about this data and maybe contribute it even in a small way. All right. Uh, thanks very much for joining me. Um, I hope you found it interesting. I'll see you in the next group.